Two particles of mass 3 kg and 5 kg are connected by a light inextensible string of length 4 meters passing over a light smooth peg of negligible radius. The peg is 2.5 meters directly above the 5 kg mass. The 3 kg mass is held next to the peg and is allowed to fall vertically a distance of 1.5 meters before the string becomes taut. So here is the picture. So just before the string becomes taut, let VB be the velocity of the 3 kg mass. I'm taking the downwards direction to be positive for the 3 kg mass. So you've got to imagine that the string is not taut. It's just the instant before it becomes taut. So technically this string is slack. So we want to show that when the string becomes taut, the speed of each particle is given by 3 root 3 g over 8. Now this is not the VB that I'm showing you in this picture here. This is the situation immediately before the string becomes taut. What we want to get is VA, the velocity of the 3 kg mass after the string becomes taut. And you will see that VA and VB are different. Okay, we'll start with the easy bit, calculating VB. So, 3 kg mass is dropped from rest, so the initial velocity is 0. The acceleration is g, I'll take downwards as positive, so a is positive, and the distance s is plus 1.5. So we're going to get uh, 0 squared plus 2 times g times 1.5, so we get 3g. So we get that vb is 3g. As you can see, the answer that we're looking for is quite different. So let's see how this comes about. Now, before the explanation, I'll just run through the solution. It turns out that we can use conservation of momentum, even though there is an external force acting in the vertical direction. Okay, so we can look at the momentum of the 3 kilogram force immediately before the string becomes taut, and immediately after the string becomes taut. Okay, so immediately before the string becomes taut, the velocity of the 3 kg mass is root 3g as we've seen. So the momentum is mass times velocity. Well, the mass is 3, and we multiply by the velocity, which is root 3g. Now the 5 kg mass hasn't moved. So its momentum is zero, its mass is five, its velocity is zero. So this is the total momentum of the system. We ignore the string because the string is so light, its mass is zero. Well, we assume its mass is negligible. Okay, let's get the momentum after the string becomes taut. The momentum of the three kilogram mass after the string becomes taut is its mass, which is three, times its velocity immediately after the string has become taut. Let's call that velocity VA. But the 5 kilogram mass now has a velocity, so it's lifted up slightly from the surface. And its velocity is the same as the velocity of the 3 kilogram mass. So downwards is positive for the 3 kilogram mass, upwards is positive for the 5 kilogram mass. So the momentum of the 5 kilogram mass would be its mass, which is 5, times its velocity VA. The velocities are the same because we have an inextensible string. So we just solve this equation to get the desired result. Now the big question, of course, as I hinted at earlier, is why does conservation of momentum work in the vertical direction? Because we do have an external force acting on both particles. We have gravity acting on both particles. Gravity is acting in the direction of motion of the two particles. So usually that's a big problem. Usually we cannot apply conservation of momentum. It's different for the case of two objects uh, moving towards each other, say, on a smooth surface, where gravity is acting in a direction that's perpendicular to the direction of motion of the two objects. So the external forces, gravity and the contact force of the surface on the objects, are perpendicular to the direction of motion. They have no component in the direction of motion. So conservation of momentum applies in this direction. You can see that's very different here. Um, you know, the internal forces on the particles are acting on a line that's um, aligned with the gravitational force. So to understand what's going on, we can break this problem into three stages. Immediately before 
the string becomes taut, well we know what the velocity is. During the string becoming taut, now that's going to be an extremely small time interval. Let's call it uh, delta t. Extremely small time interval. And immediately after the string has become taut, when the velocity of the 3 kilogram mass has velocity Va. So let's look at the forces acting on each particle during this extremely small time interval delta t. Well, um, we know that the string tension is constant throughout the string. Let's call it t here. Now we, we are assuming that, that t starts at zero. Well, it's zero in this picture. t is zero. And it's, it varies from zero up to some maximum. And the maximum I've written over here, I call it t max. So it's zero in this picture, and it's some intermediate value here, and it becomes a maximum. And this happens in an extremely small interval of time. OK, so let's look at the force on the 3 kilogram mass. So I'm taking the downwards direction here as positive for the 3 kilogram mass, and uh, upwards is positive for the 5 kilogram mass. So I'm taking the dr this direction all around the string, um, you know, anti-clockwise is positive around the string and clockwise is negative. Okay, so we have plus 3g acting down, we have minus t acting up, and uh, by Newton's second law, that's the mass of the 3 kilogram mass, which is 3, times its acceleration. I call its acceleration a3. Now we will write a3 in terms of the change of the particle's velocity. Well, that change in velocity happens over time delta t, the extremely small time interval. Now the change might not be constant, the acceleration might not be constant, so this might just be an average force, but um, it doesn't actually really matter. Um, so what do we want to put up, in, up on top here? We want a change in velocity, so we want the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Well, the final velocity is the velocity after the string becomes taut, that's the Va that's over here minus the initial velocity. Well, that's Vb. Well, we know that that's root 3g. Now let's look at a force on the 5 kilogram mass. Well, plus t acting up, minus 5g acting down, using the direction, the positive direction as upwards for the 5 kilogram mass. Uh, that's consistent with the uh, directions along the string. So by Newton's second law, it's the mass times the acceleration. So what's the acceleration? Well, because the string is inextensible, the final velocity of the 5 kilogram mass is the same as the final velocity of the 3 kilogram mass. It's Va, has the same sign because upwards is positive, um, minus the initial velocity. Now the initial velocity is zero because the 5 kilogram mass is at rest on the surface, divided by the time taken for this change to occur. Well, that's the same time taken as for the 3 kilogram mass. That's delta t. That's the time during which the string becomes taut. It's the same for both particles, of course, since they're connected. Now to find out what Va is, we could just add these two equations together. So if we add the left-hand sides, the t's will cancel out, as you see. Adding the right-hand sides, well, the common denominator is delta t. Now the next thing I will do is multiply both sides by delta t. And I will rewrite this thing. Now I've just shifted the terms around to make this more clear. Now notice what we have here, like we saw before. These first two terms give us the momentum after the string has become taut. So if we just uh, go back here, this is the situation where the momentum, bec uh, the string becomes taut. It's the momentum immediately after it becomes taut. And here's the momentum immediately before. So we said that these were equal. We said that this thing equals this thing. So that means that if we subtract them, as we are doing here, if we get the difference, we should get zero. So this difference should be zero. And indeed that makes sense because over here this time interval is so small that we can just basically set all of this thing equal to zero. So this thing here is approximately zero. Okay? Delta t is extremely small. So we don't have exact conservation of momentum here, but we have what's uh, very close to conservation of momentum. This term is negligible. So the difference of the momenta is zero, so that means the momentum before equals the momentum after. 
So the effect of gravity on the system comes through the acceleration due to gravity g. Um, so, you know, that's 9.81, but if that was extremely large, of course, well, this entire quantity might not be negligible, it might not be zero. Um, g is 9.81, but if delta t is zero in the, in the case where um, the tension force acts for an extremely small amount of time, you know, it uh, essentially makes all of this zero. Next, we want to show that the three kilogram mass will not reach the table. So, immediately after the string has become taut, this is the velocity. This is the initial velocity for the last leg of the journey. What we need is the acceleration. So to do that, we go over to this situation, after the string has become taut, of course, where the maximum tension is acting. So I'm calling it Tmax now to distinguish it from the situation um, during when the string was becoming taut, where T could have been any value from zero to Tmax. Okay, so Newton's second law says that the force on the three kilogram mass is its mass, which is three, by its acceleration, which I'll call A. So it'll have a certain acceleration after the string has become taut. And in general, that acceleration is different from the acceleration that we saw during when the string was becoming taut. Now let's look at the force on the five kilogram mass. Well, um, T max is upwards for the five kilogram mass. That's in the positive direction. So it's positive, but the weight is downwards. So it's minus five G. And by Newton's second law, it's the mass five times the acceleration, which is the same as the acceleration of the three kilogram mass. Both of these are the same because now the string has become taut and the two particles are moving with the same velocity, the same speeds and the same acceleration. By adding these two equations, we eliminate T max and we can get A. So what's happening here is that the five kilogram mass went from zero to a speed of three root three g over eight in um, a, a time delta t that we saw before. So it was resting on the surface and it, it quickly shot to the speed three root three g over eight. Now that acceleration was a different story. So that was the situation during when the string became taut. Now we're dealing with the situation after the string has become taut. So the acceleration of the five kilogram mass is new. It's given by minus a quarter g. It's the same acceleration as the three kilogram mass. So this is a different acceleration. So now the five kilogram mass's speed will go from three root three g over eight down to some smaller value because the acceleration is negative. Okay, so upwards is positive for the five kilogram mass and we got a negative acceleration. So the acceleration vector for the five kilogram mass is downwards in the negative direction for the five kilogram mass, but it's upwards for the three kilogram mass. Okay, so the acceleration is around this direction along the string. And its magnitude is minus a quarter g. So the three kilogram mass will obviously slow down. Um, so Let's see how far the three kilogram mass will go before it stops. So we're going to set the final velocity of the three kilogram mass equal to zero. And we're going to use the equation V squared equals U squared plus two AS. So we rearrange to get the distance traveled. Uh, the f we want the final velocity to be zero. The initial velocity is this thing here, which we have to square. So finally we get the value 27 over 32 of a meter for um, the three kilogram mass, but that's less than one meter, which is how far the three kilogram mass needs to go to reach the surface. So it doesn't reach the surface. It gets 27 over 32 meter of a meter away from where it is. And of course, then it's going to move back up and the five kilogram mass will fall